If you have your Bibles, turn them with me to Luke 17. We're going to start reading at a, a verse 11, and we're going to jump all the way down to verse 19. This is the King James Version, and um, uh, I chose the King James Version for a reason, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Many of you know I like to preach from the New King James Version, uh, but God has given me a revelation today. How many is ready for a fresh word? Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? <clears throat> there are not found that they return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Y'all say stranger. And he said to him, the one who was bowing, Jesus, and he said to him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for your revelation. I ask you, Father, just now that you would open my eyes for me to see and my mouth for me to say the things that I need to say. I pray, Holy Spirit, as I lean upon you 100% for revelation, that it would come out of my mouth and into their ears clearly so that we could open our hearts and receive all that you have for us in these next few moments together. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Anoint your minister in this moment. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen and amen. Shake your neighbor's hand before you're seated this morning and welcome them. And it came to pass as Jesus went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Let me just give you a little background as to what is happening so that you understand the significance of what's going on. You all say this with me. Say Hatfields and McCoys. That is the same mentality as Jews and Samaritans. Jesus was a Jew on his way to Jerusalem passing through Samaria. As a matter of fact, the Samaritans and the Jews, when they would see each other coming on the road, they would walk on opposite sides of the street. They hated each other because a Samaritan was a half-breed or half-mix with everything else. And the Jews thought, well, we are Jews. Pure God's people. So Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and he is passing through Samaria and Galilee. And your Bible says that as he came into a certain area, there were a colony of lepers. You have to understand this um, uh, about what was going on. In the Bible days, if you looked at Leviticus chapter 13, and you go from verse 1 all the way down to verse 44, uh, it was the law given to Moses that the priest of that day would have to uh, become uh, like uh, health inspectors, if you will. And they were given a command on how to inspect leprosy. And because the priest um, knew what to look for, and they had the authority to cast you, if you were a leper, you, the, the priest would cast you out of the city, away from the general public, and you would establish colonies of people of the same issue that you had. That's why they were called leper colonies, because they were people jacked up 
with the same stuff. Priests, rabbis, could not touch. As a matter of fact, nobody could touch a leper or they would be considered unclean. That's why the lepers called out to Jesus to get his attention. Jesus, master. Watch this. Jesus heard their request. He didn't lay one finger on them. You know what he said? Go show yourself to the priest. Now, these are guys who have already come from the priest at one point in their life. They had already been deemed um, uh, disqualified from public life. They were already in a colony because a priest sent them there. Somebody at the church had already recognized their issue and disqualified them from hanging out with other folks. So when Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest, something happens in these lepers. They're gonna have, they have to press through a mindset because the mindset is, we've already been there, we've already done that, and now we're here. Because the priest has already separated us from the people that we're not allowed to be around. I ain't even preaching yet, and I'm starting to preach right now. I can feel the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says they press through that mindset. And the reason why that Jesus sent them to the priest is because the priest would have known them because they were the ones that made the diagnosis and sent them to the leper colony. So they were having trouble dealing with Jesus. The priest was. They were having trouble dealing with Jesus because Jesus came to set people free from religion. Amen. And so Jesus immediately, they said, make us, touch us. We need your touch. We need your healing. Make us whole. And Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. What was he doing? He was taking the opportunity to show himself as God because these same boys that were cast out by the church who no long ago is now going to make their way back to the same place that said they didn't qualify. All they had to do was obey a word from Jesus. If they would have just stood there, the Bible says that as they went, look at your neighbor and say, as they went, that's the most powerful part of this verse because Jesus told them to do something. If they would have just stood there looking at him like a cow staring at a new gate, what do you mean go back to the church? What do you mean go back to the priest? You know, and have that conversation with God that none of us have. What do you mean? Go to where I came from. Go back to the people that hurt me? Go back to the people that separated me from, go back to the people who judged me and made opinions about me and talked about me. And, no. What they did is they said, Jesus said it. He's a master. We've already called him teacher. And because of what Jesus said, they went ahead and took off back to work. And one of them said, as soon as they started walking towards the priest, I believe instantaneously every one of them was healed of leprosy. How do I know? Because one of them was on his way with the rest of them. You know, the, the rest of the people that look like you and, 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 and they got the leprosy, they got the sores, they got the pain to prove it. And, you know, y'all share the same testimony and, and, and y'all are just on the same journey. Come on, am I preaching to anybody today? And, and, and so... One of them goes, see you later, fellas. And he comes back to Jesus. And your Bible says that he began to worship him with a loud voice. Only after he realized that he had been changed by Jesus. He had been healed by Jesus. My goodness. The other nine were making their way on to the temple. This guy came back and said, you know what? I'll get to the temple in just a second, but, but I got to go back to Jesus. And the Bible says with a loud voice, he began to worship Jesus. I wish that we had just one out of every 10 people in, in, in the church today that with a loud voice would realize that I got what I got, not because of anything I did, but because Jesus did it. And, and I wish just one out of 10 would come back and say, Jesus, I worship you and fall down at his feet and just give him praise and honor for what he has already done. Amen. You know, one out of 10 wouldn't be bad. 
I'm going to give you a shocking statistic in the, in church world today. And it doesn't matter what denomination you come out of. If you're running a hundred people, if you're running 3000, if you're running 50, it's the 90, 10 rule. 90% of the work is done by 10% of the people. It don't matter what size church you are. At this church, we're pretty fortunate. It's, it's closer to 40, uh, 45% in that ballpark. But I'm going to tell you, most of the time, only one out of 10 is going to get what Jesus actually did. Most of the time, the nine is going to be satisfied with a portion of the promise. Mm. This is good, isn't it? This fellow runs back. Let me, let me, let me show you something real quick. I, I'm, an, I'm a very, very um, um, inquisitive person. So I looked up the word leper in the Greek. And here's what it means in the Greek. It means rough and scaly. Huh. Huh. I thought, I know some lepers. You may not have it on your skin, but it, it's in your spirit. <laughs> Woo. Y'all shake your neighbor and say, he's not talking to me. <laughs> now, the other one looked back and said, yes, he is. <laughs> I know some people dealing with some spiritual leprosy. Uh-huh. And here's how I know. Because people who are dealing with leprosy have already been judged by other people at the church. And they find themselves being segregated by an opinion of people other than Jesus. Oh, is this good? And because they have been separated by religious people because of their roughness and their scaliness. You get some, what am I talking about? You get somebody that, that uh, uh, you get somebody that shows up in church this morning and, and, and it's all of a sudden uh, they remember seeing you hanging out at the club. And now you show up here this morning. They're like, oh, I can't believe so-and-so's here. I used to run with them at the club. And that gets back to that person. That roughness and that scaliness starts to build up. Oh, you know the ones you used to get high with. Shows up the same church you did. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't believe so-and-so is here. I used to get high with him. Really? I can't believe you're here. <laughs> I, I, I remember uh, so-and-so that I, I used to go out and do all kinds of stuff with. Y'all say stuff. Uh. They show up here because they've been rejected somewhere else. And they find themselves in little colonies that the religious people have rejected. Is this okay? Yes. You ever notice that they seem to run in packs? Yes. It's because somewhere, somewhere, or some way, somewhere, someone somewhere, I'll get it right in a minute, has spoken something over them that makes them think they don't qualify to be with other people. Is this good? But these people... In whatever little group they were in, this was a group of 10, had common sense to recognize Jesus for who he was. And they all cried out to him. And Jesus touched every one of them despite of the religious disqualification that they had already experienced. I had people tell me, I don't need to go to church. A bunch of hypocrites in there anyway. All they do is talk about people. You need to be in church. Why? Because even though Jesus gave them a group commandment, it was a personal instruction if you'll receive it. Jesus likes to talk to groups, but if you'll get religion out of your head and start taking it personal, what he said, and start doing what he told you to do, you'll start to realize something. All you have to do is obey. Isn't this powerful? And when you start to obey the word of the Lord... When you start to, guess what happens? Your roughness and your scales disappear. Wow. Wow. And you'll just be on your way. You'll make your way back to the church because you've got your healing. Jesus healed you of your leprosy. You're still struggling in other areas, but at least you got your leprosy fixed. 
At least you got the roughness and the scales fixed, but you're still you, you're dealing with some other issues. And, and, and one of these boys who were dealing with issues, my God, I'm about to get my preach on. One of these boys said, you know what? I recognize the fact, my God, as I'm, as I'm doing what he told me to do, and I don't know a whole lot about this Jesus guy. Only thing I know is, is, is he's, he's shaking up uh, governments, and he's shaking up religious systems, and he's saying some things that the church don't like. And if the church don't like it, then that must mean it's true because of the religious people, you can tell when you're dealing with religious people because they always want to kill what they don't understand. And it was religion that put me in this colony of lepers and I've got a fresh word right now that's going to get me out of this predicament that I'm in. This place that I'm in. And as he gets the word and he begins to realize, oh my God, I'm changed. Can I tell you that when you obey a word from God, the change is evident. Talk is cheap. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. Why? Because the priest was the one that declared them unholy and un, uh, disqualified from being in public. So Jesus said, I'm about to qualify you with a word. Isn't this good? Touch yourself like this and say, that's me. Say, I'm qualified. Not because of me, but because of Jesus. That's good. That's good. So you're hanging out in your, your, your colony of, we'll just call them lepers. People just like you. We'll just use lepers as a group tag. Call them whatever you want. Oh, Holy Spirit, are you sure? Okay. Call them divorcees. Call them bankrupt. Call them poor. Call them addicts. We'll just use the word lepers. Call them backsliders. Call them whatever you want to call them. But Jesus gave a word to them. And the word was very simple. Go show yourself. See, if we know the word... Immediately when we act upon the word, change happens. The worst thing a Christian could hear is, I didn't know you go to church. <laughs> really? I didn't know you was a Christian. My grandma said it like this, all of us are preaching when necessary, use words. That's good, isn't it? Can I tell you something? As these lepers were moving away uh, from Jesus, change had already taken place based on their obedience. They were obedient to the word of Jesus. One of them recognized, oh my God, I'm already changed. I don't have to wait to get there. And I'm not going to go to the church per se right now. But I'm going to go back to the source. And I'm going to praise him. And I'm going to worship him. It don't matter if anybody else that I used to run with comes with me. Oh, come on, this is good. I'm going to make my way back to where my source of my healing came from. Yeah. Amen. You all go on, do whatever you want to, splinter off, do your own church, do whatever you want to. That's fine. I'm going to get back to Jesus because I just realized something. I, I've, been, I've been a leper for so long, I got used to the sores. I got used to the pain. I got used to the scabs. I got used to being uh, infectious. I got used to being shunned. But now I'm going to go back to the one who accepted me and changed me with the word. And I realized I didn't do this, so I'm going to go back. You all go on if you want to. I'm going to make my way back to Jesus. And he worshipped him, and he fell down at his feet. And with a loud voice, that's powerful. Why? Because the devil doesn't know what you're thinking. Well, you ain't got to get all that excited. No, but I want all of hell to know I am no longer a leper. And it's powerful. I'm going to open my mouth. God gets glory from my praise, but the devil gets pain out of it. Because the devil thought he had me when I was a leper. He had me in the group. He wanted me in. Jesus came, this Jew, through Samaria. Jews and Samaritans don't get... Watch. The only one out of the group that came back to worship a Jew was someone who culturally didn't qualify. Not just physically because of the leprosy, 
but culturally, because your Bible says, and he was a Samaritan. Y'all do this, huh? Not only was he segregated because of his issues, he was segregated because of his birth. The situation he was born into didn't have anything to do with him. Am I preaching to anybody today? This feel good? Yeah. Once you know something, Jesus came to blur the lines of the culture. He came to do away with it because it doesn't matter if you're from Jerusalem, if you're from Samaritan, uh, Samaria, if, it, if you're from Galilee or wherever you're from. When Jesus showed up, the ground is level at the feet because Jesus said, hey, thanks for coming back, but wasn't there 10 of you? Where, 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 where's the other nine? The majority will always be satisfied with a portion of the promise. Know that. But Jesus looks at him. He went from being cleansed. That's the first part. Look at cleansed. This is what cleansed means. It means to make clean from a physical uh, stain or dirt. Spiritually speaking, it means to be purified from the guilt and, and wickedness of sin and to be set apart. It's a nice little church word called consecrated. Another little church word for you, sanctified. You with me? That's what cleansed me. So he looked down and said he was cleansed. Oh my goodness, I'm clean. I am free from the physical stain and dirt of my leprosy. Mm -hmm. Then it looked, in, in the Bible says, he came back because he was healed. Look at the word healed. It means to be cured or to be healed. What? It means to be cured. Wow. Isn't that powerful? And then the Bible says, watch. Jesus said, your faith has made you what? Whole. Look at the word whole. It is the Greek word, sozo. It means forgiven of your sin. It means healed in your body. It means delivered in your uh, uh, your mindset, and it means to be made prosperous on the earth. See, the fellas, the group, is only satisfied with a portion of the promise. But if you'll learn how to worship him for what he has done in this area of your life, worship will lead into activating so-so. Not only do you get your physical healing, but you get your deliverance in your mindset. You get the financial blessing. You get being forgiven of your sin. This was a Samaritan that didn't qualify for nothing of so-so. But Jesus said, because you've learned how to worship me, I'm going to pour it on you. There's a difference between being, made, being healed and being made whole. Isn't this powerful? I wonder today, if we took a poll in churches all over America, how many people, we would say, how many are saved today? The, uh, oddly enough, the word saved in the Greek is the same word sozo. Amen. John three seventeen, Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be sozoed right here Paul said I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation that word salvation in the Greek guess what word it is sozo right here Jesus didn't come just to offer a portion of the promise he came to give it all to you but I wonder if, if we would take a poll in church. How many people are saved? And people, uh, what's that mean? Forgiven of your sin. How many people, uh, let's just do it in this room. How, how many people in this room are forgiven of your sin? And you know y'all. Let me see your hand. Praise God. Amen. Now how many, um, uh, put your hand back there. Uh, uh, how many people in this room are walking in your divine healing? Let me see your hand. You're, you're, uh, magically, the hands are, are going down. Okay, uh, put your hands down. And how many people in this room are walking in your divine deliverance, in your mindset? Uh, and, and, okay, the hands are getting less. Okay, let me... Uh, this poll would probably go the same way nationally. How many people in this room are walking in your divine prosperity and money just ain't no big deal to you? Uh, the, the, the hands are getting less. Why? Because we've only been taught a portion of the promise. We've only been taught to be satisfied with being forgiven of our sin. When Jesus not only wants to give us the forgiveness of our sin, but he wants to give us healing. He would already gave it to us. The, it's already been paid for. He wants to give us healing in our body. He wants to give us deliverance in our mindset. And he wants to give us financial pride. That is the gospel of Jesus. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm a gospel preacher. And a part of the gospel is prosperity. Don't get hung up on money. 
Amen. Because here's the deal. You can still run with the group if you want to. Jesus didn't go chase after him. Say, hey, 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 worship me. What he did was he poured it on the one who had enough common sense to say, I didn't do this on my own. I'm going to go back and get the rest of my stuff. And there was no hidden agenda. He just came back to worship. And pure worship moves the heart of God. If you learn how to worship God for the things you have, he'll make sure you are aware and you'll have everything you didn't even know. You know what ignorance is? Ignorance is not knowing what you don't know. This guy with leprosy didn't even realize about it. The wholeness. He was just thankful for the, the healing. And Jesus said, because your worship is pure. See, when we learn how to worship God with no agenda. Mm. Oh God, I'm going to worship you because I need healing. Oh God, I'm going to. No, 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 no. I'm going to worship you because of who you are. And I'm going to press through my stuff. I'm sure these other nine still had issues they were dealing with. I'm going to tell you something else. I can't see in Scripture where the other nine were looking around to where the other one was. That's a group mentality for you, isn't it? They don't even miss you when you're gone. But if they would have taken the time to find out where he was, you know where they would have found him? At the feet of Jesus. <laughs> isn't this good? This is powerful. This is powerful. So let me ask you this question real quick. Do you want everything God has for you? Or are you just satisfied with a portion of the promise? Because it all belongs to you. And I know people have spoken over you and they've said things about you that maybe factually it may be true. Yeah, you may be an inmate in your former days. Yeah, you may be a former drug addict. Yeah, you may be an alcoholic in your former days. Yeah, you may have did some stupid stuff. We've all done stupid. If we all took the time to let you talk about stupid, we'd never get nothing done besides talking about stupid stuff. We've all done some stupid stuff. And there's some people that like to put those stupid labels on you. And if you identify yourself as a part of that label, you'll never understand what God has for you because he doesn't want you to see yourself as some as some religious person has named you because if you'll let religion do it religion will drive you away from Jesus mm, hear me now and, 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 and listen we're going to be the kind of church that it don't matter if they come in here with green hair purple hair mohawks piercings everywhere tatted all the way up to the back of the to the top of their head it don't matter how much money they have or don't have it don't matter what they drive where they live what they smell like what they look like when they come here they're going to get Jesus and if you got a problem with that we need your seat because they're coming they're coming well when so and so gets here I can't believe they're here you know what I'm sure somebody said that about me when I walked in I'm going to choose not to judge people where they are. I'm going to choose to let God do what God loves to do. He loves people right where they are. And he will give them a command. And you know what? If they'll do what Jesus told them to do, you know what he'll end up doing? He'll end up sending them back to the people who pronounced the judgment on them to say, look at what Jesus has done. <laughs> Woo, why? Because the priest had to give them the church in the Bible days had to give them the authorization because they had already been pronounced lepers. And the priest had to expunge the record and had to give them a new pronouncement to where they could legally be a part of everything going on in Jerusalem. And the question came up. How did this happen? The lepers may not have understood one word except to say, this guy named Jesus. And Jesus was like, I love it. Because I'm going to use people that don't qualify to bring me glory. And religious people will just continue being confused. And the people who receive the touch will blow religious people's minds. So you can say all you want to. I go to church and I do this and I do that. And, and I, but talk is cheap. If you can't see a change, 
You need an encounter with Christ instead of some experience, some emotional experience. I can sing an old country song and make you cry. He stopped loving her today. You know what I'm talking about? There's a tear in my beard because I'm crying for you, dear. I can make you emotional. Yeah, I'm not trying to offer you emotion. I'm, I want you to have an encounter with Christ. That as soon as you walk out of here, somebody looked at me. You're not the same as you was before you had this conversation with Jesus. Because it was instantaneous. So I don't know what kind of leprosy you're dealing with. But can I get something in your head? I want to get all the naysayers out of your ears. Because it don't matter what people have said about you. The only thing that matters is what Jesus has said about you. And the commandment is this. Just receive what I'm telling you to do. Your obedience will bring about the healing. And if you'll learn how to worship me between the healing of this and everything else you will begin to walk in sozo. Every area of your life will experience the same cleansing. Oh yeah, listen to me. Leprosy was highly infectious. But so is love. Isn't this good? Isn't this good? So today, I don't want you to leave here with just a portion of the promise. I want you to experience all that God has for you. So what colony are you living in? What group of people have people in your past placed you in? Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, if you, if you get used to living in that colony, it just becomes who you are. You get used to being a leper. You get used to people looking at you. You get used to people... Talking about you. What would you rather be talked about? Because of your leprosy or because of the love of God? It's your choice. Here's what I found out about people who like to talk. They like to talk. Amen. Say this with me. Say amen. amen. Or oh me. There's an old song out there. You said, let's give them something to talk about. It'd be all right if more than one out of ten in this room would just come back and praise him. Not ask any for nothing. This guy didn't ask Jesus for nothing. He just worshiped him. It'd be all right if just two out of ten would come. It'd be all right if just three out of ten would, would come. Okay, it'd be all right if just 10 out of 10 would just come and praise him. Because there's power in your praise. Do you have something to be thankful for? Has God done anything for you in your life? I'm just going to follow the, the, the leading of Holy Spirit in this place right now. I don't want you to come to the altar. I don't want you to come up here because you have a need. I want you to come up here and praise him because he's already blessed you. I want you to return back with a praise in your mouth. Would you do that? Would you do that? And in that moment, look, I know how we do altar calls in America and, 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 and all that, you know. We have you bow your head and close your eyes, and I see that hand, and you lift your hand and all that. But today, I, I just want to I wanna do something a little bit different. I just want you to make up your mind that it doesn't matter who you are, ma'am, who you are, sir, that you're going to return with a praise, not a request but a praise. How many will praise him today for what you do have? Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. 
Come on, even right there in your seat, just, to, just, just begin to praise him. Father, I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my, my family. I thank you for this ministry. I thank you, Lord, for everything that I have. You have given it to me. I thank you, Father, for allowing me to be the steward over all of these things. Father, I thank you for the folks who are here today. I thank you, Lord, for my healing. I thank you, Lord, that when I woke up this morning and couldn't talk, you have touched my voice. And, and not only am I talking, but I'm singing good today. And I thank you for that. And, Father, I thank you for, for, for the love that I have for these and the love that you have for these. And Father, I thank you for meeting our needs financially and superseding our expectations. And Father, I thank you. Oh my goodness, I feel the movement of Holy Spirit in this room. You better go and get your praise on. You better go and get your thankfulness on right now. Just begin to praise him. Just begin to tell him how, how good he is. And don't, don't bring any requests to him. He already knows about it. Right now, he wants your praise. And when you move into that praise and you move into that attitude of gratitude, something happens in your spirit. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My, 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 my. Lord, I thank you that you are connecting people to people. Father, I'm thankful that you are restoring relationships in this room. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm thankful, Lord, that, that even though uh, our kids are driving us nuts, they, they, they love us and we love them. And Father, I thank you. I just thank you for supernatural Psalm 91 protection over every area of my life. Father, I thank you. I thank you that I have the ability to walk. I thank you, Lord, that I woke up this morning and didn't have to get on oxygen machines. And Father, I thank you that they didn't have to roll me in here in a wheelchair like the doctors predicted when I was little. Father, I thank you that I walked into this house today and I thank you that I'm going to walk out of here today in Jesus. And I'm thankful, Father, that you changed my life. And I'm thankful, Father, for those who like to talk and for those who like to point fingers and point out the obvious. Lord, I pray that the other obvious would be that I have been in your presence and that I have been with you and that you have made a difference. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I want to ask you something this morning. I want to ask you something this morning. Do you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Do you know Him as Lord? Because if He's not the Lord of all, He's not Lord at all. Oh, I'm thankful that I'm forgiven of my sin, but have you surrendered everything in your life to him do you know how much peace and rest there is when you learn how to surrender you know what the international sign for surrender is is you come out with your hands up <laughs> praise God how many is ready to say Jesus I know this area in my life, it's a dark place, but I'm coming out with my hands up. How many is ready to say, Jesus, I'm just coming out with my hands up? I got a bad report. I'm dealing with stuff in my marriage. I'm dealing with stuff in my finances. I'm dealing with stuff in my body. I'm dealing with stuff in my family. Uh, but Jesus, I'm just coming out with my hands up. I'm going to surrender all to you right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just do that right there where you are. Just, just lift your hands and say, Father, I'm coming out. I'm coming out with my hands up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to do this, and then we're going to close. I want you to look at me just for a moment. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Have you been forgiven of your sin? Because if you have not, you are missing the greatest life you'll ever know so I wonder is there one in this place with every head bowed and every eye closed just for a moment is there one in this room that says pastor I can honestly say I do not know Jesus as my savior but I'd like to is that you today would you just slip your hand up I won't point you out or embarrass you I promise but I will pray for you. Is there one like that here today? Quickly. Maybe it's you in this room today. You say, Pastor, I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand. This is what I'm going to do. Maybe it's you in this room today that for whatever reason, you just couldn't raise your hand, but you know the truth. You know where you are. 
Would you say this prayer with me? And I want the whole church to repeat this prayer with me, but I want you, my friend, if you raised your hand today or maybe didn't have the courage, if you'll say this with your whole heart, you'll leave this place changed today by the power of God. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. Make me new. I believe Jesus is your son and that he died for me and that he rose again. And right now, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Thank you for your grace and mercy and love. Thank you for your forgiveness. And right now, I surrender all of me to all of you. Now, with no one looking around, if you prayed that prayer today, and, and, and the fancy terminology is you, you got saved, but you gave your heart and life to Christ today, and this is the first time you've said that prayer. Is that you today? Would you just slip your hand up and let me see your hand? Is there one like that here today? Quickly, thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something. Thank you. The Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice when even one person comes to know Jesus as their Savior. This morning, we've had several all over this place. So you know what is going on in heaven right now? They are having themselves a square dance. They're throwing down. Somebody's dropping a mic. The angels are singing and dancing. We're having a party in heaven because somebody has come to know Jesus as their Savior and Lord. So I don't want us to take a back seat to these angels. I want us to celebrate the fact that salvation has come to your house today.